morning and welcome to you and welcome to a new year of ClinCheck Theater Thursdays. I am your host, Dr. David Gallagher. This year, we're going to go through lots of ClinChecks every week. We will bring you a different ClinCheck with a different learning principle. Today, we're going to start with one of the most important ones, the one of the most complicated ones, and it is a word that I want to teach you called intra-arch alignment. The current Invisalign ClinCheck code, whether you're using Go, Treat, the Galler engine, the Mollus engine, obsesses about lining up teeth within the arch. Now, ordinarily, that's a very good thing, but sometimes can create a little bit of a problem, and I'm, I'm going to demonstrate to you over here. Let's take a look at this case. You're looking at the first and second bicuspid here, and you could see that the second bicuspid is slightly buckled to the first bicuspid, whereas the mid-third of the tooth do not relate to each other. If you also look at it from the, this perspective, you could see that very slightly, the marginal ridge of the first bicuspid is slightly lower than the marginal ridge of the second bicuspid. The ClinChat code is taught to align all the teeth to perfection within the arch. What that means in this case is that we're going to move the first bicuspid slightly buckle. We're going to move the second bicuspid slightly lingual. There's going to be an intrusion of the first bicuspid and an extrusion of the second bicuspid so that the two teeth relate to each other, buckle lingually, incisogingula, and mesiodistally. These teeth look a lot more aligned than these teeth do. That is how the system works. Now, that seems like a very good idea, and that seems important, but when you look at it from an occlusal standpoint, what you're going to notice is that the case starts off like this with a fairly good tight occlusion, but because of the obsession with the intra-arch alignment, unfortunately, the end-stage occlusion is not as good. Do you see how the occlusion kind of opens up a little bit over here and how it's a little bit tighter at the end? Plus to mention that these moves don't really help your occlusion at all, likely will lead to a posterior open bite. So whenever we see nonsensical movements, you see how this tooth is contacted really, really nicely. And at the end, it doesn't contact as nicely. We don't want that. I think I would prefer to have the occlusion at the beginning of the case then at the occlusion at the end of the case, it doesn't seem as tight and connected. True, these teeth are better aligned within the arch at the end of the case, but the overall occlusal scheme is not as good. When I see this type of kind of herky, jerky occlusal movement, I ask the technician or I go into 3D controls to remove it. Join us next week as we learn how to remove those movements using 3D controls and live updates. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.